Hi, I'm Donna Wilder. And I'm Janie Donaldson. Welcome to Quilt Central. Flowers play a major role in our everyday life, and today with our decorating theme, we're going to show you how to incorporate them into different projects. We're glad you joined us at Quilt Central. Funding for Quilt Central has been provided by the American Quilter Society, dedicated to promoting today's quilter. Quilting Machines International, providing quilting machines and supplies for the world. Sulky of America, taking creativity to new heights with decorated threads, stabilizers, and books. Lawn Tamers, great landscaping takes more than just trimming the grass. Lawn Tamers Nursery and Garden Center. The Warm Company, manufactures of products especially designed for serious quilters, crafters, and home sewers. Quilting Arts Magazine, techniques for art, quilting, and embellishments. Free Spirit Fabrics, quilting fabrics with style. Easy Quilting by Rights, share the excitement. Quilt Central, celebrating quilting in everyday living with your hosts Jane Donaldson and Donna Wilder. Our decorating today takes us into the garden room. Let's take a look at the before picture. And now, let's take a look at what happened when we decorated this room. Obviously, we centered it around a floral theme. There are beautiful, fresh flowers. Notice the bed covering is a floral pattern that has been machine quilted on the long arm machine. And check out that beautiful wall hanging. This one features the snippet technique with a beautiful vase of flowers. And my guest today, Cindy Walters, is going to show us how to do it. Cindy is representing the Warm Company, and she is also the author of More Snippet Sensations. Welcome, Cindy. Thank you, Donna. How long have you been doing the snippet technique? Well, I was teaching traditional quilting, and in about 1995, I came up with the snippet technique because I wanted to paint on my quilts. Well, it does have that very painterly look to it, the That's impressionist right. sort of feeling. It's free and easy. You just simply just cut your snippets and a dab of fabric is a dab of paint. So we're going to talk about making floral arrangements Sure. Today. And let's, I want to make a smaller version than the one you okay. showed on the wall, and I'll give you some other ideas. The first thing we do need is our foundation or something to build the project on. Okay. So I have a piece of about 18 by 22. And then the different colors, something for a vase, and maybe two or three larger pieces, 6 by 12 of green for the for the foliage, mm -hmm. the greenery, and then all my spark of colors for the flowers, purples, pinks, uh, yellow. If your decor was all pink, for instance, you could make all your flowers pink or uh -huh. fuchsia, and just match your decor, but I like a lot of colors, so you see I have a lot of color in here. Then of course I need a sharp pair of scissors and about a yard of fusible web. I use the Steema Seam 2 uh, because it's pressure sensitive, and I'll show you how to get started fusing with, with that web. You simply just pull off one of the paper liners, there's the web, set your fabric on it. That's it. For snippets, I trim around all four sides and trim that web out. But you're not going to believe this if you haven't used this before. It's so I'm, easy, isn't I'm it? I'm pre-fused and I'm ready to go. I just pull off that back and piece of paper oh. and there it is, ready to go. And that just holds yes. on to the fabric. The other thing about it is the back part is pressure sensitive too, so it's staying on this side of the fabric and I can design my whole project and then iron it once at the end. But when I'm completely finished, 15 seconds of heat makes this temporary bond permanent. So we start off by <laughs> pre-fusing all of our fabric. The first thing we have to make, of course, is the vase. Mm -hmm. I like to start in my projects with the farthest away dimension and work up closer, right. but th even though the vase is not the farthest away thing, I'm going to make it first so that you have a good perspective of dimension mm -hmm. of the project. So I have a rectangle here and I fold it in half, and to cut a vase, it is simply this easy. Simply cut a vase. Pretend you're in kindergarten. Like making the hearts that we used to make. That's right. It's free and easy yes. and, and very forgiving. There's no way you can make a mistake. So I would cut my vase, pull off the paper, and go ahead and set that in place about perhaps an inch and a half from the mm -hmm. bottom. And here I have it set in place. The next thing to do is to cut some of the foliage. 
and normally cut with the paper off. It's it's a little harder to cut with the paper off, but then it's easier in the long run. Because it adheres right mm -hmm. away to it. And so I can cut long, sweeping green pieces. Uh -huh. And, you know, cut do it however you find it easy. You don't have to cut these right in place. You can cut them up in the air. And I would set them all around and fill this in. Lift up your vase, tuck some of these in. And of course your leaves could even be cut more leaf shaped. They don't have to be long fern shaped. Mm -hmm. So I could cut a variety of actually leaves and place them all around. Now do you uh, put this up on a wall to kind of see what the dimension looks like or do you usually work right on a table? I usually stand back and view it from uh -huh. about 10 feet, I just like a quilt. Yeah, it really does help. So here I have the vase and the greenery uh, finished. Uh -huh. One of the secrets is, is to get enough green throughout the center area so that you can't see through all the flowers. Right. And you'll notice a lot of these aren't even connected. I uh -huh. simply just sweep color around and spread color around with the fabric. Once the green is done and the vase is in place and we're all set, the next thing is to start with the fun the part. flowers. Our flowers. Now I love making like lilacs or hyacinths or uh -huh. something because it's freely cutting. So this is the true essence of snippets. Where I'm freely cutting snippets to paint with. You'll notice I'm using the front portion of my scissors. And it never matters how it comes out. No, and, and, and the shapes are just funny shapes. They don't, mm -hmm. don't worry so much about the shape. I'm a little worried more so of the color. I'm just placing color around. I think and experience I can, must help you to feel and let this go well, so freely. You know, if you have to cut on the side and cut some pieces here and place uh -huh. them in, it's okay. okay. It's just so that you enjoy it. And I like to mix colors up. I pretend I'm an impressionist painter the whole well, time I'm doing that this. Way. And so I can mix a little more purple in right with this. See? Isn't that pretty? It just oh, sparks beautiful. it right up. And you can just use your favorite colors and fabrics. I particularly like fabrics that are printed mm -hmm. uh, more so than just solid fabrics. That right. gives me a little more character. And these with the tonal shades are wonderful because wonderful. they give you a lot of dimension mm -hmm. within the flower. So I would go ahead and fill up my background so that I'd have perhaps maybe four or five uh -huh. nice lilacs or something in there mm -hmm. with these freely cut. The next would be perhaps to add some bright color like yellow or something. I love yellow. I could never get enough of yellow or purples and blues. To make a daisy, I simply just cut about maybe 15 spears and and then those you do actually place. They're a little and then bit. I'll, yeah, then I'll just kind of place these around. Yeah, but again, they're very random. Very, very random. Now, I've had students make incredibly beautiful projects where they've cut perfectly little shaped petals. Uh -huh. But I can't do that. I yeah. want to work really fast. You so, like it to go yeah, there. I like to just swim a bit. And so this is a fun way to do fast and fun. It is fast. I would fast. pick one of my darker colors and make myself make a center for the flower. Mm -hmm. It's just that easy. It's done. Now, if you don't want the daisy and you don't like the daisies, you could still use them. Perhaps use this daisy as to make a, a goldenrod or something to spread color around. Oh. And I can just place them all around. And here I've got one up here. Kind of pretty to interchange the different yellows. Mm -hmm. More just dimension. spreading color out, that's right. A flower that I particularly love is a tulip. So to make a fun, fast tulip is simply just cut a circle and then pull off the paper. Remember to pull your paper off before you cut right. these little these little mm -hmm. snippets. And then cut two quarter moons. I'll do it here on the side so you can see. There's one quarter moon, uh -huh. another quarter moon, and then some straighter wedges. We're going to put the straighter wedges down first. I'll put okay. it here. Quarter moon <gasps> on both sides. That. And you have a perfect little sweet tulip. Isn't that darling? It's so great. fun and easy. We're just playing. Another way to make a nice tulip would be to take a center chunk of a color and then take any of your other colors that you want to feature on either side and put them on both sides and you have another perfect little beautiful flower. Mm, Isn't that pretty quite. just like that? Now once this is done then, right. then you press it? Well, I add a lot more sparks of color. <laughs> yes, oh. I take any of my colors. I took the border fabric and right. I fussy cut some flowers uh -huh. out of here. And just take any of your spark of color. I mean, literally, I can just sprinkle color around. And that they're not even flowers. They're just sprinkling color, color around. Oh, that looks great. When I'm completely finished, set it for a full 15 seconds. Mm -hmm. Especially if you're going to machine quilt through it, you want to have it fully set. Okay. So, and we're going to press in one place. Don't iron back and forth. Right. So we're going to press for 15 seconds. Then audition your border fabric and turn it into a quilt.
Well, let's take a look at a few of the other ones that Great. you brought with you. This is one that we saw earlier in the dining room. <clears throat> this one has a few other techniques that I absolutely love. It has some regular shaped leaves uh -huh. around this rhododendron with some random shapes oh. in here. And here I simply cut round petals. Mm -hmm. Isn't that pretty? It's, it's so effective, but it's so simple. Uh, this is also just round petals, and here's the tulips I yes. already showed you. Then for this sunflower, you cannot oh. believe how easy it is. I simply just set around little spears mm -hmm. and left a hole in the middle and then put dark in the middle. To yeah, top it off, I, I, love took the bird. The, <laughs> I took a bird from the border family. It's Isn't that great. cute? It's yeah. a cheater one. It's so now effective. This is, this is a small one that this looks very, very attractive. This is very sweet, yeah. Uh, this is actually uh, the little teeny tulips I showed you then with spears behind it, and that's it. I mean, just so effective, and there's nothing oh, to it. It's great. And this one is the whole big sunflower. Oh, I just love wonderful. that. And we've already seen how to make the sunflowers and just the leaves behind. Oh, it's and great. So we, and you have several that you brought with us on the walls that look uh, charming, and it, it's great. Thanks. This it's is a technique that I think anybody could do. I think so, too. Thank you. Well, thank you for joining us today. And now let's go to Jane, who is again showing us some new techniques on the long arm quilting machine. Trapunto no longer is a difficult process. And I'd like to show you a few tricks on long arm too that add itself to the simple process we've now made, the trapunto. Um, sometimes in a house, we don't always decorate with patchwork. We find a beautiful piece of fabric because we're all fabricolics and we love to have that as a whole cloth piece. We might use it on a chair covering or just a uh, child's quilt where we don't want to put an extreme amount of uh, patchwork be effort because they might get gum or nail polish on it. So we would use a whole cloth piece and quilt it. And I want to talk to you just a little bit about a couple of tricks here. One is outlining. When you get a whole cloth piece and you want to outline it, it's good if you stay away from the actual print itself because the print comes to the top of the puff. So you don't want to lose any of the leaf shape or flower shape. So you stay maybe a quarter of an inch away. Or if you have a real thick batting, you might stay a little farther away yet so that the print is on top of that. And you've given some side to the puff of the quilt. Um, also, in some prints, the leaves are not real distinctive or the flower shapes are not always real distinctive. But when you quilt around them, you make them that way you put a point on the leaf, or you give the daisy a little bit more shape around the leaf, and that adds to the look of it, uh, makes it a little bit more distinctive. I'm gonna actually quilt around one of these here, so you can see that I do stay away from the um, actual print. And then I'm gonna do a little trapunto. Now see, I'll put a big point on that leaf. Oops. You can actually do a continuous line thing. You can actually go from flower to flower. These are so close together you can really um, just go from one to the other. But I'm also going to do one here in Trapunto so you kind of see the difference and how we get that in there. You know, the old-fashioned way is we used to have to split the back, stuff it, and put a whole new backing on. But nowadays, with the new uh, gizmos and the way that the machines open up, we can take extra batting, cut it the shape of what we want to puff up, and I want this little flower here to puff up a little bit more. And you can add quite a few layers. This is about three ounce batting, so I have three, six, nine, and I have about a three ounce in it. So that would be 12 ounces of batting and I have added in as much as 20 to get a real tight puffy crown on things. But I'll show you this machine actually opens up and I can place what I want in there and if I'm not absolutely sure it's going to stay in there where I put it I can actually add a little bit of spray basting to that. But I'll open this up And I can see pretty good inside because it opens up a long ways. And I can actually get that in there. 
right where I want it. And it'll stay long enough to get this back down. This one's called a pivoting access. Um, and there's a lots of different ways to get in between the layers. But this is a new and fancy uh, gizmo on this machine. Other things you can do with it is you can actually add in color. Um, if you have a white quilt and you are wanting to bring a little pink look to the quilt, you could add like a red heart in between the layers and that would show up through their pink. And it's a shadow type quilting. Now I'll go around this one and you can see that it works just fine to get the Trapunto to stand up without ruining the back or going to any additional work at all. Here we go. Like I said, you keep the leaf shape as distinctive as you can. The points on the leaves and keep the shape in the flower. I'll tie my thread off here so that you can get a better look. And you will see that this flower is very different from the one next to it. And my intention with this quilt is to put this on the bed as a whole cloth piece that I can wash and wash and wash and the piece of patchwork that I'm making to match it will lay across the foot of the bed. But I just knew that in a child's room I wouldn't want to launder my patchwork as much as I would be laundering a bedspread. Another thing you can do to make this stick up just a little bit more is add some meandering really tight around it or some other kind of background texture work that you would like and um, that will make that even stick up more or be more distinctive. But give it a chance to uh, try that on something that you would like. It makes for a wonderful, wonderful look with hardly any effort at all. It's fun to quilt whole cloth prints sometimes and Trapunto is just the perfect technique to accent those beautiful designs. Joining me today is Patricia Bolton, who is the Editor-in-Chief of Quilting Arts Magazine. Welcome, Patricia. Thank you, Donna. It's wonderful to be here. This uh, is exciting. Yes, thank you. We're a new magazine dedicated entirely to embellished quilting, including contemporary art quilting, crazy quilting, working with silk ribbon, beading, that sort of thing, for the creative quilter. Well, uh, I've looked through some of the pages and I'm absolutely impressed not only with the content, but the layouts are lovely too. Thank you, thank you. We're striving to be a little more of an upscale quilting publication dedicated to somebody who, um, who wants to subscribe to a magazine and be able to refer to a magazine for a long time to come. How do you get the uh, people who do the articles for you? Well, we've done, we do our own sort of research and looking through other uh, publications. We go to quilt shows. If we see something that really grabs us, we try and get that artist to see if they're interested in writing for us. As you see, Yvonne Porcella has written an article on burned silk applique, and she just has some stunning quilts, as I'm oh, sure you know. She does, and you know, it's lovely because our theme this time has been florals, and so we're going to look at a oh, few of great, the florals. Great, Yes, I'd love to show you some of the this quilts mag in here. This one seems to be filled with floral designs yes. as well. Well, what we did also is we love to invite our readers to share their quilts with us oh, as well. So we have a whole portion of the magazine dedicated to their artwork. Now, is, are there parts of the magazine that are consistent from magazine yes, issue to the yes. next? Yes, we show very specific techniques for stitching, uh -huh. for piecing, for crazy piecing, for example. Uh -huh. uh, lots of how-to techniques. And then we have an artist in profile that we invite somebody to mm -hmm. show us their quilting and readers submitting their works, that sort of thing. Right. Well, I had another page that I marked oh, that I thought, oh, this, this lovely? is spectacular. It's gorgeous. This is by Dean Deerfield, a wonderful, lovely artist. And in this quilt, as you see, it's a landscape piece of a cottage quilt. And she has tons of silk ribbon and, and beads and all just s sorts of, of, of fun things. She's got the feather stitch roaming through um, the cobblestone path. 
It's great. You know, it's it's fun to see so many different techniques too, because mm -hmm. I think what makes a magazine so interesting is that you have such variety. Yes, yes, exactly. And we strive to be the publication that is really dedicated to a, a ton of different techniques all in one in one magazine. Now you don't call it a how-to though. You you really no, are telling the showing how to do it. But it's how how to do the techniques neat. and then okay. lots of eye candy so that people can take a look, for example, at Dean's gorgeous quilt and say, you know, I want to make something like that. I want to be able to use the beads and the silk ribbon and do my own sort of floral quilt. Well, I think from looking through the pages, you certainly have created that eye candy, and I know that this is the kind of magazine that the more art quilter yes. is going to be looking yeah, for I and so. so I think you've done a wonderful job. Thank you and so I'm really much. glad that you joined us today. Thank you Donna. Even the most enthusiastic quilter needs to take a little break now and then and I just love to get outside where I can hear the birds and feel the breeze. I think it kind of stimulates the creativity for quilting. I had made so many quilts for beds inside that I wanted to have a flower bed outside. So I wanted to have it be a little patchwork garden. So I came up with a real simple design, a little diamond shape, and I've been working on that to try to create that here in the dirt, and it's about 40 inches wide and 80 inches long, which is about the top of a single bed. So. I have begun and I've been working on planting the Mexican heather in kind of the edge of the border here. And I've just about run out of some dusty miller, so I had ordered a little bit more. Hi, Michael. Hello. This is Michael Davis. He's from Lawn Tamers and he's actually done all the design work here at Quilt Central. All the beautiful things that are put in around us, you see he did all that. Uh, Michael, do you want to tell them a little bit about what we have in this area? Yeah, what we did is uh, we brought in some periwinkle or vinca to put in as the edge or the border. And uh, we used coalesce as the corner to kind of cap it off. And then we brought in dianthus for the middle because it's a little bit taller and a little bit more colorful. And then we use the Dusty Miller for the triangles to give it a little bit more definition. I think it came out really nice. Yeah, yeah we had fun oh, doing it. So. Yeah, I'll just have to get that little corner in and I'm yep. just about done. All right. Well, thank you very much. Uh -huh, happy planting. Well, thank you. You know, I have seen so many creative artists and they have always flowers or some sort of leaf at the center of their work, even if it's china painting or toll painting or whatever it seems to be. And so much of the quilters have, uh, they work with the patterns, their fabrics, most of them are the floral designs. That I just can't imagine anybody not actually being out in the garden and working out here. Get a few more of these in. And we'll have that corner finished, and then we'll water it, because down here in the south, it is very hot, and things dry out daily, so we have to water often, or we have very many wilted plants. Get that up there. These don't go too deep, so you have to keep the surface wet. So I keep a sprinkler going somewhere in the yard just about all the time. I know when I'm out here, I'm thinking about the quilting patterns. And when I'm in the house, I'm thinking about the gardening patterns. But I certainly do enjoy the break both ways. All the china that you saw in the house was my mother's. She hand painted it and her inspiration was in the garden. Even to way late in her life when she could barely maneuver outside, she still got outside and worked in her garden and found great enthusiasm in doing it. Maybe I can get one more in here. Make it just a little bit thicker. So if you're looking for real inspiration, Get some fresh air and plant some flowers.
visit the Quilt Central website at www.quiltcentraltv.com for more information on this program. So wasn't it interesting how many different types of flowers they got to work together in the same decorating theme? It really looked good, but I was very impressed with the flower bed that you made out in the garden. If you enjoyed that, next time we're going to have a nautical theme. So see you then on Quilt Central. Funding for Quilt Central has been provided by the American Quilter Society, dedicated to promoting today's quilter. Quilting Machines International, providing quilting machines and supplies for the world. Sulky of America, taking creativity to new heights with decorated threads, stabilizers, and books. Lawn Tamers. Great landscaping takes more than just trimming the grass. Lawn Tamers Nursery and Garden Center. The Warm Company manufactures of products especially designed for serious quilters, crafters, and home sewers. Quilting Arts Magazine. Techniques for art, quilting, and embellishments. Free Spirit Fabrics. Quilting fabrics with style. Easy Quilting by Rights. Share the excitement.